The Monster Under the Shed. Based on the original story by Random House, adapted, edited, and told by July Leonard. <clears throat> it was a dark, blustery evening at Knapford Station, and Halloween was right around the corner. The Fat Controller had closed the railway earlier on an account of the weather. The engines were waiting for the signal to return to Tidmouth Sheds. Maybe one of us should tell a story to pass the time, Thomas suggested. The engines looked pleased with Thomas's idea. I have the perfect story for tonight, James volunteered with a sly grin. A long time ago, began James, there was a little blue tank engine who was always eager to help. His name was Hawwin. One night, the station master walked up to him and his crew. Hawwin, he asked, would you go to the end of the tracks to pick up a coach that's been left behind, please? He, he asked. Of course, replied Hawwin, and he set out into the foggy night. But by the time Hawwin reached the end of the tracks, the fog was tho so thick, he could hardly see anything. I'll just have to wait until morning when the fog lifts, said Hawwin to himself, and he settled into an old shed for the night. Later that night, Hawwin awoke to a noise coming from below the shed. Creak! He opened his eyes and saw long ghostly fingers reaching for him through the floorboards. There was a monster under the shed. Terrified, Hawwin raced out of the shed with the horrible engine-eating monster chasing him through the fog. The th then what happened? asked Toby timidly. That's where the story ends, said James. No one ever heard of him again. Well, what about the monster? What about the monster? whispered Percy. Don't be silly, Percy, chuckled Gordon. It's just a story. What if that story is true? Percy asked Thomas on their way to the sheds. What if the engine-eating monster is out there somewhere right now? Stop being such a scaredy-cat, Percy, answered Thomas. There are no such things as monsters. Later that night, after they settled in, the engines were startled by a terrible racket coming from Percy's berth. Gordon! Thomas! Help! There's a monster in my shed! wailed Percy. Suddenly, James appeared, roaring with laughter. He had been rattling some scrap metal behind the sheds to frighten Percy. I'm a monster! I'm a monster! he shouted. Percy was embarrassed for making such a fuss. It's okay, Percy, said Henry. Sometimes good imagination think bad thoughts, added Edward. Later that night, Thomas woke with a fright. He heard a strange noise. Scratch! Scratch! Stop it, James, he yelled, but James was sound asleep. Scratch! Scratch! If it's not James... Then maybe I really do have a monster under my shed after all, thought Thomas, and he stayed awake all night just to be safe. Thomas was awfully tired when he met Percy at the top station at Farquhar. Did you hear strange noises in our shed last night? Thomas asked. Not after James's silly prank, replied Percy. Now Thomas felt silly himself for staying awake all night. By the middle of the day, Thomas was very sleepy and running behind schedule, but he did make up for it afterwards. By the time he reached Ellsbridge Station with Annie and Clarabelle, Henry pulled up beside him. You look like if you could use some special Welsh coal, said Henry, observing him. Oh, I'm just a little tired, Thomas answered. He didn't want anyone to know that he'd been too frightened to sleep. Just then, James came by with a local passenger train. What's the matter, Thomas? He called as he stopped. Monsters keeping you up all night? 
He chuck <laughs> he chuckled. Just then the guard blew his whistle and James disappeared from the platform as he set off, laughing loudly. By the end of the day, Thomas barely had enough steam to make it back to the yard. The other engines were telling stories again, but Thomas headed straight to Titmouth Sheds. Sometime that night, Thomas woke with a fright. Scratch! Scratch! The noises were coming back, and they were definitely coming from his berth. Who's there? Thomas whispered into the dark. Creak! Creak! came the answer. Go away, monster! Get out! ordered Thomas as he closed his eyes tight. Thump, 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 thump. The noise was getting louder and closer. That will surely wake the other engines, Thomas said to himself. They'll save me from the monster. But the other engines didn't stir. Thump, thump. It's, it's, just, the, it's just outside the door, yelped Thomas. There's its head. Help, Gordon. And he, Help, Gordon. There's its head. Help, Gordon, he whispered, but only the monster heard him. Thump, 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 thump. Then the doors of Thomas's berth ba began to rattle on their hinges. Bang, 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 bang. It's trying to get in, thought Thomas. Then suddenly the banging stopped. Thomas was too frightened to move. He peered into the dark, and there it was, the horrible engine-eating monster. Thomas could see its gl eyes glowing in the night. Thomas clamped his own eyes shut and screamed, Gordon! Henry! Percy! James! Edward! Toby! He cried, Save me from the monster! <laughs> Thomas! said Gordon, laughing. Open your eyes! <laughs> what are you laughing at, Gordon? snapped Thomas. There's a monster out, right outside my shed. Not anymore, Gordon replied. Now the monster is inside your shed. Thomas opened one eye slowly and saw... A hedgehog? He yelled in surprise. I was afraid of a tiny little hedgehog? Now all the engines laughed, and Thomas laughed with them. Percy has a good imagination, little Thomas. But I think yours is even better," said Gordon with a little. <laughs> said Gordon with a little chuckle. "I think you're right, Gordon," agreed Thomas. "It's the only thing in the world that could turn a tiny hedgehog into a big scary monster."